Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to enhance daylight photographs using a technique called shadow recovery. Now for this tutorial I'll be using the brand new GIMP 2.10 Release Candidate 1. Uh, this is basically what GIMP 2.10 is going to be, although they're still working on bug fixes, uh, but this is a step up from GIMP 2.9.8. They've got more features that are going to be found in the new GIMP 2.10 version, and uh, that of course will be the first stable release version of GIMP in seven years, so very exciting. Uh, so if you're following along and GIMP 2.10 has come out by now, then you can uh, still use this tutorial. It's going to have all of the features that you're going to see in your new GIMP 2.10. So here's what my photograph looked like before I did these enhancements. And here are the uh, enhancements applied afterwards. And this is a pretty simple tutorial to do, but the results, as you can see, are pretty awesome. Um, and this is a photograph I took myself uh, earlier today. And so I'm going to go ahead and post a link to this in the description of this video so you guys can use this photograph. But before we get started, of course, I want to direct you guys over to my website, daviesmediadesign.com tutorials. As always, we've got tons of video and text tutorials on here, and we also have a new Browse All GIMP Tutorials page, which allows you to easily browse through all of the GIMP tutorials found on our website. And you can browse through these by category, uh, GIMP version, and uh, the types of tutorials that are found here. So definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And our course has recently been given the designation of highest rated, which means this is the highest rated uh, GIMP course on Udemy. So thank you to everybody who's given us great reviews and for everybody that's enrolled in the course. And as always, I'll include a link to this in the description of the video. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here by opening up the image that we want to use. And so I'm going to come over here to my computer and here's a bunch of images I took earlier today. And here's the image I use for this tutorial in particular. And so all I need to do is right click on this and go to open with and choose GIMP. And that will automatically open it in here. And so here's our base image and you can see compared to the uh, final image over here, this image is a lot brighter, has a lot more colors in it and it just looks better overall. This was taken midday. They always say not to take photographs midday because you'll get overexposure, things like that. Um, unless you have something called a neutral density filter on your camera, which I didn't actually have that for this. I literally used my uh, Canon Rebel and I used the stock lens that came with it and I used autofocus. Um, pretty much everything was set to auto. So it's pretty easy to get a photograph like this um, in daylight and then we can bring it into GIMP here and go ahead and make some adjustments to further enhance the final product. So the first thing I want to do, and we can change this to house just to make this easier. But I want to go ahead and duplicate this main image. So I'll come down here and click the duplicate icon. And you could change this to house plus one exposure. So right now the GIMP editor has made this an 8-bit image by default. But what we want to do is change the setting of this image to 32-bit floating point integer precision. And what that's going to do is allow us to increase the shadows and the midtones of this image without completely blowing out the highlights of the image. And uh, that's just because the 32-bit images have a little bit more information. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here to Image, Precision. And you'll see here that 8-bit integer is the current option selected. I'm going to come over here to 32-bit floating point, click on that, and then just make sure Linear Light is the option selected for Gamma, and go ahead and click Convert. And now that's converted our image into a 32-bit linear floating point image. All right, once we've done that, we now want to increase the shadows of this image without blowing out the highlights. And uh, the reason I want to do that is the sky is pretty bright here because, as I said, it was in the middle of the day. But over here, underneath the door, we've got, you know, some shadows here under the shade. And this door is a nice red door that I want to bring out a little bit. And uh, so I want to be able to basically just increase the, again, the shadows and the midtones over here more specifically. Uh, without blowing out the sky. So what I'm going to do now is go to Colors, Exposure, and I'm just going to add one stop of exposure to this image. And by default, it's going to be very bright, and the uh, this is basically what the sky looks like blown out. You can see that this is way too white over here. Uh, but I'm just going to set this here to 1, and I'm just going to leave the black level at 0, and click OK. So now in order to correct this looking blown out, we're going to go ahead and right click on here and go to add layer mask. And this is our house plus one exposure layer. And under initialize layer mask 2, just select grayscale copy of layer. And go ahead and check invert mask and click add. 
And so this is going to basically bring our uh, highlights into check here. But you'll also notice that the image doesn't quite look right. It kind of looks fuzzy. And so we're going to fix that by clicking on our layer mask and then going over to Colors, Auto, Stretch Contrast. And again, I'm on that layer mask. And make sure that Keep Colors is checked here. And once that's finished rendering, you'll see that some of that fuzziness has gone away now and this is starting to look a little bit more normal. So go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to hide the layer that we're working on right now just so you guys can see the progress thus far. But you can see already that the uh, shadows under here are definitely a lot brighter, but we've kept the highlights in check here so they're not completely blown out. So I'll go ahead and unhide that. The highlights are definitely brighter, but again, they're not completely overexposed or completely blown out. I'm going to click back on my main layer here, and although we have the brightness that we want, I still don't have really the colors that I want. So I want to bring out the red in this door and the red in this number here, and uh, just the general blue of the sky. So in order to do that, again, I'm on my main layer here. I'll go to Colors, Saturation, and this is the Gaggle version of Saturation. And I've got this turned up, the scale turned up to one, almost 1 1.4, and you can turn this up by just clicking and dragging this here. And you'll see how vibrant our photo looks now with some colors added to it, and how red our door looks. And I'll just toggle the preview here. Here's a before, and here's an after. It does help that when I took this picture today, it was a pretty perfect day out. Um, so that does help this image look nice. You can see the blue sky and the reflection of the windows, which really adds color to this building and to the photo in general. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now that's applied some saturation here. I'm going to do a few quick other alterations here. Uh, these are kind of optional depending on what you want your image to look like. But I'm going to add just a tiny bit of contrast here by going to Colors, Curves. And so here we have our curves, and I have the channel set to value, which means it's going to work on all the colors in the image. And I've got an S-curve here, and anytime you have an S-curve, it's going to create contrast. And so um, I don't want to overdo the contrast on here, and I actually don't have the preview checked. So I'll go ahead and check that preview so I can see what the curves look like. And you can also do a split view here if you want to split this in half. I'll go ahead and show you real quick. And so on the left side is the after, and on the right side is before we apply those curves so you can kind of see uh, what this looks like. But you could tell that it's applying a little bit of contrast here, which is um, helping some of the various elements in our image pop against that sky. But again, I don't want to overdo it, so I can just click and drag these anchor points here. And if you don't have anchor points already created, you can just click on the line and that'll create a point on the curve. Uh, but once we have the settings we want, I'll go ahead and click OK. And so that went ahead and, again, applied a little bit of contrast to our image and it also helps some of the colors pop. And now I can adjust some of the colors in here if I want to. So I can go to Colors, Levels. And now over here under Channel, I can adjust some of the colors in my image. And right now I'm on the red channel, which means this is affecting the red colors in our image. And so I've come over here and you've got three triangles here. You've got the black. Uh, which represents the shadows, then you've got the gray, which is the midtones, and the white, which is the highlights. And so I've just brought in uh, some of the shadows here and brought in some of the highlights, and that's just going to make adjustments to the amount of red that are in uh, those areas of the image. And you can also come over here to, for instance, the green channel, and I did make some adjustments here just by clicking and dragging um, these arrows, these triangles here. But what this has done essentially is it's kind of toned down some of the green in the image. So you can see if I toggle this preview off that there's really just a slight tinge of green, especially in the shadows here. And so by making these adjustments to the levels, we've kind of taken out some of the green in the image. And it's really just a very slight adjustment, but I think it makes the image look a little bit better overall. So go ahead and click OK. And now we've applied those changes to some of the levels, some of the uh, levels of the colors in the image. And our image is really looking great now. Uh, a lot of the colors are standing out. They're popping against the sky. And we've brightened up some of the shadows, especially under here, under the shade part. And uh, we haven't blown out the sky over here. So um, overall, this has really enhanced our image. One last quick thing here. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll just name this layer Vignette. And I'll click OK. And notice that my uh, layer is filled with transparency. And I'll show you guys one more time if you missed that. So right here it says fill with transparency. And then I'm going to come over to filters, light and shadow, and I'll choose vignette. 
and this is another gaggle filter. So we have the color set to black here for this vignette, and you can adjust the radius, which is basically going to move this vignette either in or out in reference to the uh, center of the image. So the larger the radius, the further out it's going to be from the center of the image. I'll keep this to around 1.2. The softness is just kind of how that gradient fades out, so how it fades from the, the color of the gradient to the transparency. And you can squeeze it if you want, if you want to narrow it and bring it inside. Um, but I would just copy my settings here, keep the center X and Y at 0.5, that's just going to keep this centered on the image. And the rotation is set to zero, which means um, these corners are going to be directly on the corners of the image, the corners of the vignette. So go ahead and click OK. And this is a little bit too intense for my taste, so I can decrease the opacity of this a little bit. And then I don't really like how it's making the corners of our image look. It's kind of giving it like a grayish color and it's taking away from some of the color of the sky. So go ahead and change the layer mode here to soft light. And this is going to allow the colors to get a little darker around the edges of our image here without it being too overbearing or without it altering the colors too much. So we can do a before without the vignette, you'll see um, there really isn't any framing without the vignette here, and then after, this just gives us some slight framing here without totally altering the colors too much. All right, and if you want to export this image, you can go to File, Export As, and then go ahead and name your photo. I'll name this Denver Exterior Home. And under Select File Type by Extension, you can choose whatever file you want to save this as. I'll save this as a JPEG image and click Export. And I'll go ahead and turn this quality up all the way to 100. And you can also choose some advanced options in here. And if you want to keep this at floating point, you can go ahead and choose floating point. I'll just keep this at integer for now. And I'll go ahead and click export, and that'll export this as a JPEG to our file location that we selected here. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Pretty easy tutorial, but again, it provides some great results, especially for daylight images or images that were taken in the middle of the day that are very bright that have some shaded areas and you want to bring out those shaded areas, the shadows or the midtones. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also check out our Udemy course, GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher, and I'll include a link to that in the description, as well as links to our social media pages and this image that I used in the tutorial. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.